Welcome back to another episode of Full Retard. Today we have more Choosing Beggar stories. First up, Dude Wants His PC Fixed by M.M. Melinda. Here's a story from this morning. I never thought I would have something like this to share. My dad is a teacher. School for the children haven't started yet. There is still the question if they will ever have in-person classes this year. But teachers have to go in for the big time being. So he is at night at home from 9 to 3 to 1 o'clock. There is also renovation going on in the house that mostly he is doing, and my brother helps when he is home. The house is a mess right now, but will look nice sometime in the future. If you know what I mean, Mom has a running joke that Dad should multiply asexually so he could do everything he wants. All in all, he's a busy dude. Another background info necessary to this story is that my dad was one of the first people in the village that was having a PC in the 90s, so he knows some computer stuff. He says that nowadays he can't keep up with the evolution of the technology, but he can set up a PC with an OS and the drivers and make the internet work. All in all, the more simple stuff he often says that he knows how to use Google to solve simple issues. Some details about our choosing beggar. There is a guy in hit his 40s who had some kind of brain surgery in the past. I don't know the details. I'm not sure how I should formulate this to not sound insensitive. He has a few screws loose. He is perfectly capable of everyday stuff, though. His one and only hobby is surfing the net trying to hook up girls. He even tried it with me when I was in high school. Read underage. After he was at our place, so my dad would fix his laptop. I blocked him immediately. I was disgusted. His wife left him because he was trying to hook up with girls while married and having a child. All while his mom was enabling him because poor Bob. Anyway, on to the story. Finally, yay. This morning, Bob comes here and wants my dad to go right now and fix his laptop because he cannot connect to the internet. Dad tells him that first of all, he is off to the school now, and second of all, he is renovating and does not have time for him at the moment. Keep in mind that this fixing would be out of kindness, no money involved. This dude goes on a 10-minute rant about how people today don't make time for favors and everyone just wants to do his or her own thing. How people only have time for themselves and how selfish they are. Also, that this fixing would not take a lot of time only like five minutes if my dad would actually know what he is doing. Okay then. Well, he leaves, but this interaction left our family nervous, leaving like WTF. The world should stop because Bob wants his internet fix right now and fast. Ha ha, sounds like my husband. Next up, Choosing Becker Coworker Demands Free Food by LAII12. I enjoy cooking and will bring in food for coworkers. On the weekends, work in a hospital. Generally bring in a few dishes for the potluck and will sometimes make plates for people on their birthday for those I'm closest to. Enter Choosing Beggar, who, mind you, I've said maybe three words to in my entire life. You're the one that cooked for Bob's birthday, right? Yep. It looked amazing. Oh, thank you so much. Anyway, my birthday is on Monday and I wanted to request some food. I was thinking steak tips with, like, mashed potatoes or something. Death Definitely something fancy, and of course some sort of dessert or cake. Uh, well, I don't usually work on Mondays, and steak tips are kind of expensive. Can't you just drop it off? It's for my birthday. I live 40 minutes away. I don't want to do that. What if I make you a cake for the potluck on Sunday? But then I have to share with everyone else, and it's my birthday. Can't you just work on Monday instead so that I can have food on my actual birthday? I can't change my schedule for something like this. I'm sorry. But it's my birthday, and I'm already sad that I have to work on it, and now I don't even get food. So you should either bring it food for me or work my shift. Like I said, I don't work on Mondays, but I'm happy to make you a cake on Sunday for your birthday. What about the steak tips? What about them? I like them cooked medium. I'm not making steak tips. I'm already making a dish for the potluck, and I offered to make a cake for your birthday. But you made food for Bob. Bob is my best friend. I don't even know you that well. That isn't very fair. Do you want a cake or not? It's not even worth it. If you're not going to make steak tips, can you at least work my Monday shift? No. Choosing Beggar rolls her eyes. Well, I'll just ask someone else then. I didn't work that money, but I guess Choosing Beggar did and complained the whole day about people not properly celebrating her birthday. Next up, the Choosing Beggar who refused to contribute to my grandma's funeral expenses by theory of the universe. I already feel like I might get different opinions on this story on what I did, but this was something that happened a couple of years ago when my grandma passed away. My aunt, the Choosing Beggar, came from a poor country and immigrated to the U.S. some 15 years ago. Since then, she has done really well for herself. My grandma helped my aunt's family financially for over 30 years 
including contributing towards her business that is running very well right now. I've always felt that my aunt disliked my grandma for whatever reason, and I felt like even more strongly when my grandma passed. Family gathered in kitchen, discussing funeral preparation. I think we should all split the expenses since grandma didn't have insurance and it's going to be too much to take care of on my own. Why do you need it to contribute? Grandma didn't do anything for me anyways. Two surprised Pikachu faces from my entire family. What do you mean? From what I remember, she's really helped you out more so than the rest of the family. She helped you get to the U.S., she helped start your business, and she supported you for over 30 years. How's that not doing anything for you? I'm disappointed you even think that. Mom did so much for you. Yeah, she did do all that, but she didn't leave me a will and a will so I can get the house and that she has back home. There's five of us. What makes you think she will leave the home to you? I'm clearly her favorite child. It only makes sense that it comes to me. Anyways, I will not contribute to her funeral expenses. You are absolutely not getting the house mom actually wrote the house to me to sell and split between us but i will not let you have your portion i cannot believe how disrespectful you are what that's impossible i was the favorite i guess you weren't the favorite after all i will not contribute a single cent to this you can take the house and shove it me seeing red but trying to stay calm okay auntie you don't have to contribute aunt stops off to complain to her husband i was furious but I knew exactly how to shut her down. I started a new job a few weeks before her death. So guess whose first paycheck was coming in two days before the funeral? Mine. In my culture, the first paycheck is always something that is looked at to be the start of the future. So the way someone spends it is extremely important. I made sure to do this at the funeral parlor in front of my entire family with the microphone accidentally being on. My uncle knew I planned this, so he was thumbs up in me the entire time. Day of the funeral in front of the whole family. Here you go, Mom. I want to give you my first paycheck to put towards Grandma's funeral arrangement. I know it's been hard for you since Auntie said she would tribute towards funeral arrangements, despite all the time and effort Grandma put towards making sure Auntie had a good life, especially since she financially took care of her for over 30 years while Auntie just stayed home. But it's okay. I will contribute because Grandma has taught me so much. Hopefully her soul will be happy that although her daughter is ungrateful, her granddaughter truly cared about her. Oh, oop, is this thing on? Silly me, grins at Auntie. Uncle in the back, thumbs up at me. My family members and other friends who came to pay respect. Oh, drama. My aunt was so furious, she turned red and walked away. She hasn't spoken to me since, and honestly, I couldn't care less. Nobody gets to be ungrateful to my grandma. Next up, A Little Cheesing Beggar by Prime V3. Apologies in advance, as this ended up being longer than I expected. This happened about 10 years ago. My mother and I were visiting my sister in South America, where I was born. Now, the country we were from is notorious for choosing beggars, although usually they tend to be family members. It is common for family members living in the USA, Canada, or the UK to receive all kinds of audacious demands from those living in the old country. They will call you and ask you for shoes, but they need to be Nike or Jordan. Phones, but they need to be the latest iPhone. Car stereos, but they need to have Android Auto. Auto money, and they will specify the amount. Power tools, and they need to be DeWalt. And all kinds of other expensive things that we sometimes don't own ourselves. On this particular occasion, the choosing beggar was not a family member. This day, my mother, sister, and I decided to go to the market. We were shopping for fish and fruits. About 30 seconds after we exit our tacky taxi, I'm approached by a small child, maybe 7 years old. He has his hand out and I give him two $100 bills, the equivalent of $2 in US. He smiles and runs off. A moment later, a man in his 20s approaches me and says, Hey, buddy, can I have a raise? I look at him. He is wearing a new cap, a new shirt, and new pants that he has cut holes into to make it appear tattered. I'm hungry and I haven't eaten since yesterday, he adds. I reach into my pocket and realize I only have $30 bills left. I was a teenager and my mom had all the shopping money. I pull them out and count out 10. I offer them to him, $300 total. He replies, Sorry, sir, but I only accept $100 bills and above. You gave that boy 200 and walks away. I stand there stunned. I have no idea what just happened. I offered this moron $300 and he doesn't want it because it's a small bills. Really? A few minutes later, I saw another small child, maybe 10 or 11 years old, wandering around, holding out his hat and asking people for money. I walked up to him from behind, tapped him on the shoulder, and put all $300 in his hat. When he turned around, he smiled, and it made my day. Choosing beggar missed out. I haven't been back to that country since then. Finally, free food by Yen Tirb717. My country has been doing weekly food giveaways every Saturday since the pandemic started. You drive up, they verify your residence with your ID, and they throw boxes of food in your trunk. My country county has about 500,000 people, and there's a huge range of 
community in terms of income level, food access, and housing stability. One of my neighbors has been going to these giveaways every week. Past three weeks, she has caught me outside working in the yard, and all she does is complain about the food they are handing out. What am I going to do with collard greens? Spinach, onion, apples, and this much chicken. They gave me five pounds of tater tots. What the F? Etc. Etc. If she needed the food, I would understand, but it sure seems like she doesn't. If she wants to give away the food she won't use, great, but she spends half the day every Saturday going from house to house complaining about the free food. I have been suggesting she take what she doesn't want to the town clerk's office or to a local church or looking at the Community Pandemic Help Facebook group for someone who is asking for help, but she shoots all of those down as too much work. Of all the bizarre things that happen in my neighborhood, this is the thing that really bothers me. The community that I grew up in had a lot of food and housing instability and to think that someone from my old neighborhood is going hungry because she entitled it but is throwing out good food because she doesn't like it or what it gets under my skin like nothing else thanks for listening be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel it really helps us out subscribe to our podcast and like us on facebook